a very special plenary session with Prime Minister Abhisit of Thailand. I think we are very privileged, uh, Prime Minister, to have you here with us. I think it's the first uh, visit you are doing abroad after everybody followed, of course, uh, with great interest what was happening in your country. And uh, we will have a dialogue, and I would suggest that we split the dialogue into two sections. The first one will deal with what I would call the incident in your country. And uh, the second one will deal more with the uh, uh, future and your future plans. Now, the demonstrations ended on uh, May 19th. Uh, but some people say there are certain radical elements of the red shirts that are still working underground. Uh, how will you address uh, this and what, what is your plan uh, for reconciliation in your country? And I would, I would also appreciate because when you follow television, um, the whole situation was very much seen in the polarized view of poor against rich, democracy against uh, the army, urban against um, rural, so, uh, if you would uh, tell us what, what is your opinion for the, for the real reasons for what has happened. Um, maybe um, if you wanted to understand what had been happening in Thailand, uh, we might have to go back quite a few years. Um, with, with due respect to the reporting that has been made out of Thailand, I appreciate how difficult it would be to make everybody understand exactly um, the causes of uh, the events that took place um, in, in May. Um, simply put, or at least the uh, simplest as I could make uh, things, um, this has been an accumulation of problems that have taken place. Um, it began with the, the, the what I would say the final, final days or final years of the Thaksin administration where there was widespread abuse of power and people took to the streets to, to oppose him. That uh, in the end culminated in a, in a coup d'etat which meant that uh, another group of people now have grievances um, against what took place politically. And, uh, the supporters and opponents of the former Prime Minister have therefore been engaged in quite strong conflict um, as the coup leaders um, held a referendum for a constitution to be promulgated and then elections were held. Um, the elections um, resulted in a hung parliament. The pro taxin parties uh, put together a coalition but they were subsequently um, removed from office by court rulings. Um, particularly the second pro taxin administration was removed by a court ruling following an election fraud, which was all in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution. But even before they were removed, um, the opponents of uh, former Prime Minister um, took, the, took to the streets, and uh, again, the peak of those protests were when they uh, occupied the airports. Um, that was when a fresh vote was taken in, in Parliament. Um, we put together a majority of parliamentarians and we had been in office now for almost a year and a half. Um, during that year and a half, I can certainly reassure you that we have done all we can to try to reach out, to find a political solution, to find some kind of compromise. But it was also have to be based on the need to keep some principles intact, the rule of law, and that uh, anything that involves negotiations must mean um, talking about public interest, not the interest of a particular person or a particular group. Um, that's what we've tried to do. Um, I was time and time again frustrated and let down by the rejection of the various offers that I have made. For instance, I had offered early elections following a referendum on constitutional changes. Originally, that was accepted by the parliamentarians from the government side, the opposition side, the Senate. But then it was turned down uh, following former prime minister's 
um, intervention. Uh, and then even during the protests, um, I actually went to the lens of sitting down with the protest leaders in um, a televised rounds of negotiations, offering to cut my term short by a year. Uh, and again, it was rejected. Uh, and then even after the violence on April the 10th, I also came up with a reconciliation plan, which seems to have the approval of majority, an overwhelming majority of Thai people. Again, only in the last minute was it rejected by the protest leaders, and uh, some leaders actually quoted in the intervention of the former prime minister. The situation was very difficult to handle this time around, um, not because the majority of protesters weren't peaceful. I still believe that the majority of the protesters, the red shirts, were peaceful, that they had uh, grievances, they had legitimate grievances. Um, you know, Thailand, like a number of countries, um, suffers from uh, inequality of some kind, opportunities, income, wealth. Although often I think uh, this has been exaggerated uh, well, without actually checking the facts. Um, I have all the numbers that measure inequality in Thailand. I can certainly tell you that they are no worse, uh, even in some developed countries, um, whether you use the Gini coefficient, the poverty gap, and so on. And uh, one fact that has often been ignored was that uh, as far as all indicators are concerned uh, to do with the inequality, they had improved, all improved last year despite the economic crisis because this government took particular care to design a stimulus package that would help um, people who most needed assistance, which means the, uh, the elderly, the handicapped, the unemployed, and also we ran programs, initiated programs like free education. But they had legitimate grievances. What made the, the situation so difficult to handle this time around was that we have found that uh, infused among these people are, uh, uh, is an armed group of people. People who engaged in violence on April the 10th, uh, using violence against both um, security officers and innocent people. And uh, these people um, are by the definition of uh, the Thai criminal code, which is in line with the, US, uh, the, with the UN uh, charter and convention are engaged in terrorist acts. Uh, we were aware of that, and that's why we took uh, particular care to make sure that our security operations would never um, go into the main protest area. What we tried to do uh, in mid-May was to cordon off the protest area, and when we tightened that, uh, that uh, blockade, if you like, and moved into an area where weapons were stored, where uh, grenades were launched from, um, that was when we pressured the uh, protest leaders to, to call off the protest. Um, regrettably, there were losses of lives um, during those two months. Uh, no Thai wanted to see that. Um, but uh, what we now have to do as we move ahead is to make sure that uh, we enforce the law, uh, we bring to account to justice those people who have engaged in violence and terrorist acts while at the same time the government has a clear policy to continue to pursue a reconciliation plan uh, to reach out to all groups of people, including the red shirts, uh, to address their grievances, whether the issue is about freedom of expression, democracy, the constitution, and, or, or um, inequities uh, in terms of economic and, and social gaps. Um, these issues will be addressed in the reconciliation plan. That's how we uh, intend to deal with the situation. Um, as I said, often the situation gets oversimplified, as Professor Schwab has, has, has put it, uh, rural, urban, uh, democracy, army, and so on. But I think there is uh, much more uh, to all the events, that the incident that took place um, in April and May. And uh, at the moment, we are uh, moving ahead with the reconciliation plan, which includes, of course, uh, setting up an independent panel um, as a fact-finding commission so that uh, everybody will be accountable. Let me just say um, that since the protests ended, the business of government and democracy has gone on as usual. Um, I have been able to pass 
the first reading for the next year's budget through Parliament. And also last, last week, we extended um, a session of Parliament so that the opposition could submit a no-confidence motion against the government. And uh, we have now passed that uh, confidence vote. Uh, a cabinet reshuffle is now taking place and uh, we are determined to move as swiftly as possible now to the priorities, uh, which is uh, a, pro, uh, a period of stability where rehabilitation and reconciliation can take place. Prime Minister, apparently uh, this uh, protest movement or certain parts of it have been very well financed and you have taken measures now to stop those financial flows, but could you tell us a little bit more about the amount and origin uh, of those flows and whether you are certain that, uh, let's say, the, the supply of financial resources is stopped? Well, one phenomenon that took place um, in the last few months in Thailand was that we had um, a network of people who actually uh, withdrew cash, cash to the amount of uh, around 600 million US dollars while these activities were going on. Um, it's very unusual. Uh, I'm sure that you would agree with me. And that was why it was necessary for us um, to take some action against those financial flows. But uh, we are very careful so that uh, if uh, these occur through businesses that are legitimate and they have uh, the necessity to uh, to, to make some financial transactions such as uh, paying their employees, paying for the utilities or uh, uh, finance their debt and so on, we would allow those uh, flows to take place. They just need to justify and uh, we will move as quickly as possible to establish exactly what these flows were about and, uh, and then uh, we will take all this uh, according to the due process of law in Thailand. Prime Minister, when you followed uh, the demonstrations uh, through foreign television channels, you very often had the impression it was the opposition against the government. And in reality, there must have been a diversity of uh, opposition groups ra ranging from the moderate, uh, let's say, legitimized up to the terrorist groups. Could you tell us a little bit about this diversity? What, what types of, of opposition do you see? Well, tellingly, um, around the beginning of this year, one of the protest leaders actually said at one of the rallies that the Red Shirts movement would be uh, composed of three parts. A political party, mass demonstrations, and also an armed group of people. Um, what you witness in, in, in April and May um, throughout the, the incident clearly uh, confirms that there were at least three elements um, in this movement. Uh, what we try to do as best we can is, first of all, as far as the uh, armed um, extremists or terrorists are concerned, uh, we take uh, legal action against them. Uh, we try as best we can to make sure that the innocent people who make up the masses that join the demonstrations would not suffer. And at the same time, we do all we can to appeal to the, mor to the moderates within the opposition political party um, to somehow separate themselves from a violent movement, uh, return to parliament as a primary forum where problems should be solved. And uh, I appreciate the fact that a number of governments have echoed um, this strategy. Um, I think statements issued by the, uh, uh, the, uh, the United States, um, by, the, by the EU high representative clearly uh, echoes um, the desires of uh, our friends and allies to see the problems resolved through nonviolent means and calling for red shirt leaders and opposition politicians um, to, to stay away from using violent means. You just mentioned, um, Prime Minister, uh, red shirts and opposition leaders. So the question uh, could be raised, if you look at the parliament at this moment and you look at the opposition, uh, how much is it uh, affiliated actually with, with the red shirt movement um, uh, and how much is legitimate or opposition? Well, it was uh, at one point very difficult to separate one from the other 
because um, in April and, and early May, when the session of parliament was coming to an end, um, the opposition party at first wanted to table a no-confidence motion against the government, and therefore they were sticking to parliamentary means. Um, around mid-April, they called it off, and all the MPs actually went on stage at the, uh, well, a majority of them went on stage at these rallies, and were saying clearly that they wanted to pursue their objectives um, throughout, through extra parliamentary means. Uh, but once the protest ended, and we had the extraordinary session of the House to uh, consider the, the budget bill, um, they decided to resubmit the no confidence motion, saying that now they wanted to fight uh, uh, through parliamentary means. And of course, we allow them to do that, um, even though uh, quite a sizable portion of the Thai people uh, felt that it was uh, probably not, uh, uh, well, not, not politically correct for them to have, uh, to have been uh, flip-flopping on the issue. But we felt that uh, that's where um, accountability, that's where um, political uh, competition should be. So we allowed the motion to, to, uh, to take place. We extended the extraordinary session, and uh, that was what happened on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of last week. Uh, uh, I believe that there is a spectrum of uh, uh, opposition politicians. Uh, many of them are moderate, will maybe join protests so long as they are peaceful. But uh, it can also be said that some of the MPs have been uh, supporting directly not just the activities of the protests, but uh, we have good reason to believe that uh, they are also, uh, at least they are very aware of all the violent acts that took place on the part of the uh, people in uh, who, who, who adopt men in black in the media. Prime Minister, so what's uh, the fear uh, when the demonstrations ended that uh, the demonstrations may be um, repeating themselves at a later time uh, after, let's say, those people have regrouped? And so was particularly the fear that uh, the demonstration would be dislocated, if I may say so, uh, to other places. How, how do you see this probability, or I should ask it in a more positive way, what guarantee do we have mm -hmm. that uh, those demonstrations do not occur anymore? Well, we, we believe that there are elements of the movement who are determined to carry on, even uh, attempting to continue to use violence. But our approach is, um, is this. We have a dual um, um, uh, process um, taking place um, in parallel. On the one hand, obviously, uh, we need to deal with people who engage in illegal and violent activities. Um, that's where we have to strictly enforce the law. And that's one of the reasons why we have not yet been able to remove a state of emergency um, that is still in place in, in Bangkok and also in some of the provinces because we feel that there needs to be a consolidation as far as government and security officers are concerned so that they can work uh, uh, together to, to, to make sure that no, there is no repeat of violence. At the same time, as I say, the priority now is to uh, pursue the reconciliation plan, uh, to reach out, to address the legitimate grievances, and, and move very fast on that, uh, demonstrating our determination and sincerity in doing so. Um, I'm trying to ask a, a number of leaders uh, outside politics as well to join in this process um, and also to reassure the people who, uh, who support the opposition, the people who disagree with the government, people who dislike me, that they can be reassured that there will be space for them, that they can join in, that there are stakeholders because I'm confident that the majority of Thai people uh, want to see peace, stability and prosperity. Um, what has taken place over the last couple of months, I'm sure for many people who are here who are familiar, who have come to, to, to know and love Thailand, I think it's been very uncharacteristic of, of, of Thai society. Mm -hmm. Much more characteristic is what you saw once the protests ended, where I think a lot of people, a lot of volunteers came out to do the cleanup, um, actually even uh, engaged in some activities yesterday for the uh, uh, environmental um, day. And also, uh, when we do um, special programs to help uh, those small businesses who are affected by the the fires and the riots and the protests, 
um, where we have closed off some streets to allow them to sell their goods. A lot of people just turn up, so many people just turn up to show support uh, for these people. Um, that's what we want to tap into, um, the strengths of uh, the, the people of Thailand um, to carry this agenda forward as far as reconciliation is concerned. You just mentioned, Prime Minister, you used the word legitimate grievances. If you had to define the one, two, three most, uh, let's say, important uh, grievances which you find are illegitimate, which one uh, would you um, uh, mention? Which ones would you mention? Here? Well, economically, I think um, all Thais aspire to have some kind of um, uh, social safety net and protection. And while um, successive governments, including mine, have pursued a number of programs that have pushed Thailand now towards having a welfare system, uh, more work needs to be done. And I think people should have the right to good education, to good health services, health care, and uh, to have some kind of uh, insurance when, 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 they, when they are old. Uh, we are going to push this agenda forward. I think these, these grievances are certainly um, legitimate. Politically, everybody wants a voice. Uh, sometimes they may feel that their voice is not heard loud and clear. We want to open up uh, political space more, particularly from, for people who feel that they don't have that space, uh, especially people in rural areas uh, where they felt maybe that so much power is concentrated in the capital. So we will pursue that agenda of decentralization and making sure that there is more participation from people. And uh, thirdly, you've got a group of uh, marginalized people, the landless, people who have to, uh, so much debt in the informal sector, and so on. Again, we need to make sure that there is a systematic way of uh, dealing with their problems, integrate their problems into the mainstream um, system of uh, the economy and, and social safety net, and that will also be part of our plans. Prime Minister, uh, the economy, and particularly tourism, has shown relatively resilient against what has happened, which shows also a great confidence into Thailand as a country and as a great potential for development. Um, what, what would be your message here to the business community? Um, can they have confidence now? And uh, what would justify this confidence? Well, the first thing that I would draw attention to is the strong fundamental of the Thai economy. I think uh, that is borne out by the figure for the first quarter of this year. Remember actually that uh, in March the protests had already begun. Um, for the first quarter of this year, the Thai economy registered a 12% growth. I think it's uh, probably one of the highest rate um, in the world. Uh, so it suggested that uh, there was a strong momentum and recovery going on. Uh, my second point is that despite the political conflicts, the political differences, um, during all this time, all political parties and the Thai people are still committed to the approach and values and what you may call policy direction as far as the economy is concerned, which is that we believe in the market economy, in open, opening up the economy. We value the contributions of uh, trade, um, foreign investment, and also of tourism. And, uh, despite the differences uh, in the views politically, none of the parties involved suggest that we take any other route. Thirdly, um, I can reassure you that we are moving as swiftly as we can. Uh, we have, I think, a good uh, macroeconomic policy framework in place, um, a stimulus package that continues right through to the end of this year and may be carried forward for the next two years as far as uh, uh, infrastructure investment is concerned. That's still going ahead. The Bank of Thailand has clearly recognized the need to continue to adopt an accommodating monetary policy to support the recovery. Uh, we are clearly targeting um, sectors that have been most affected by the protests. Uh, in physical terms, that area of uh, Raja Prasong, the shopping center, we now have all the answers as far as the compensation and assistance package uh, for uh, the employees, for the small shops, uh, for the main shopping malls. And uh, at the same time, the tourism sector, which has been uh, most affected, uh, the target for this year was going to be 16 million um, visitors to Thailand, uh, up from 14 
million last year. Uh, we believe that we can still sustain at least the same number last year and uh, actually to, to make sure that there continues to be some growth. Um, we will begin with a package that stimulates domestic travel um, to create confidence and stability in order to then take this message out to people outside uh, to welcome back foreign tourists. Prime Minister, you are in a dilemma. I, we all see you have um, policies in place which uh, force the reconciliation, but those policies require a period of uh, stability. Uh, now, on the other hand, uh, you will have to conduct elections, and elections, um, let's say, entail the issue of polarization and of uh, emotionalization. Now, how do you, how do you maneuver and, um, between the need for elections and the need for a relatively um, uh, extended time of stability? I think an overwhelming majority now clearly recognizes the need for a period of stability. And uh, that, that period, maybe between now and the end of the year, is when we have to make sure that uh, economic recovery um, is well underway uh, with, with uh, strong foundations. I think that's achievable. Uh, at the same time, through, the, through our pursuit of the reconciliation plan, uh, we hope now to address some of the grievances. And if this process can be inclusive, uh, we intend it to be so. We invite everybody to join in, and we will do the best we can to convince uh, particularly those people who support the opposition to join in. If they do join in, I believe that we can settle some of the issues, such as the constitution, um, such as the issue concerning the media, uh, such as the um, issue even on some of the key policies um, to address the, um, the, the gaps, the divisions in society. Uh, my intention is that uh, certainly by the end of the year, um, there will be a steady progress. There will be confidence that we have the mechanism to carry out uh, these tasks, even though there is a change of uh, government either through elections, uh, early elections, or when parliament's term is complete. Um, and I will balance that against what I could achieve um, with early elections as far as uh, uh, providing a political solution to the problems. So I will, I will be mindful of that balance. Um, I don't intend to use the reconciliation process as a pretext for not having early elections. That's certainly not my intention. I'm open to the idea of early elections, but those elections have to be helpful to the recovery process of the country, to the, to the best interests of the people. Prime Minister, you just said if the opposition accepts, uh, I think that was your words, um, uh, the preconditions, um, now, when you have a situation where you have behind uh, this opposition, and I may be straightforward, uh, groupings of people who really are not ready to, to, to play it by the rules, um, what, what can you do against it? Well, I have to insist that everybody has to play by the rule, that a democracy, and a healthy economy needs rule of law. Uh, we will not allow a situation where any person can put himself or herself above the law. Uh, if we compromise on that uh, particular point, we might achieve um, stability, but only in the short term. We would only be inviting more and more troublemakers in the future to manipulate the situation politically and otherwise, or otherwise. And, uh, 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 destroy what would be uh, key foundations of a healthy democracy and a healthy uh, market economy. So I would say that uh, I, I would insist on making sure that the law is enforced, there is rule of law, and at the same time appeal to everybody that if they had um, points of view, if they had grievances, that concern issues that are the interests of the country, public interests, interests of the people. This government will do its best to accommodate, to find a compromise, to find a solution. But they must move beyond the interests, the narrow interests of maybe one person 
or maybe just a, a small political group. There is no point in having the interests of the majority of people, the interests of the country, the progress and development of a country being held hostage, being held in check, simply because somebody who is wealthy or, or, or who, who would want to wield power uh, wants to hold that development process and the opportunities of people, of the Thai people, as hostage. We won't allow that to happen. Prime Minister, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, coming extra from Bangkok here, uh, to give us a very ensuring mes message. I think um, uh, this region, your country, of course, uh, deserves uh, stability, it deserves peace, it deserves um, sustainable, uh, strong growth. Uh, but not only your country, it's the ASEAN region, which uh, is very much affected by what's happening in your country. Uh, so we wish you all the best for your policies. And I have to say, in, in Davos, uh, when we talked about um, holding this uh, World Economic Forum on East Asia in Thailand, um, and we said, yes, uh, that should be the case one day. Um, I hope that one day we can come back and we will look back to this uh, afternoon and we will say the Prime Minister gave us just the right message and the message became true. Thank you.